जय जय श्री राधे श्री वल्लभ आदेश की जय श्री गिरिराज धरण की जय जय श्री कृष्ण टुडे इज द थर्टी थर्ड डे ऑफ रेसिटेशन ऑफ द चौरासी वैष्णव की वार्ता द स्टोरीज ऑफ द एटी फोर वैष्णवस टुडे वी आर हियरिंग वार्ता नंबर ट्वेंटी वन द स्टोरी ऑफ प्रभु भास प्रभु दास भाद from simhanand bhav prakash the inner meaning prabhudas bhat is shri lalita ji sakhi in the eternal leela and her name is kalahansi he was born into a family of bhats who those who sing the praises of kings his father used to go to the local ruler and recite poetry to him he was very well off When Prabhudas was 10 years old it became evident that he was not very intelligent academically his father tried everything to get him to study but he would not then his father died and when Prabhudas turned 15 he went to Delhi to the local ruler who asked him to recite some poetry to him Prabhudas replied to whom do you think poetry should be recited I don't know but I know I need nothing from you the lord gives me to eat so why would I need you to look after me The ruler ordered him to be thrown outside the city limits and Prabhudas saddened left that place. He came to Mathura where he sat on the banks of the Sri Yamunaji river at Vishram Ghat and started to cry. Oh why did the lord make me into such a fool? What will I do now? Where will I go? Wherever I go I get disp- disrespect. He sat there full of such anxiety. At that time Sri Acharyaji was in Mathura and he came to Vishram Ghat. Seeing Prabhudas there and knowing him to be a divine soul, he called him by name and asked him why he was crying, and told him to bathe and come back to him. Prabhudas bathed and Sri Acharyaji initiated him with the Lord's name and Brahma Sambandh. At that moment, Prabhudas realized his own form and that of Sri Acharyaji. He bowed low to Sri Acharyaji and sang this two-line verse. Since I have been separated from my Lord, I have been wandering around in the well of material existence. For this reason, Sri Acharyaji Varabhacharyaji has appeared and revealed his and our true form. Hearing this, Sri Acharyaji was most pleased and told Prabhu Das that he now understood the path of grace. He then advised him to start serving the Lord. Prabhu Das replied, "This is all only by your grace. You have purified me for acceptance through your status as none different from the Lord." I was the most disappointed and sad person but you were able to let me have the sight of the ocean of joy in a single second. Now my request is this that I may never fall into bad company. Let me be constantly bound faithfully to your feet. Shri Acharyaji granted his request. Then Prabhu Das purchased a swarup of young Krishna and took him home. Shri Acharyaji performed the five nectar bath for the Shri Kapadi and gave him to Prabhu Das to serve. He then blessed prabhu das telling him that the path of grace would always be revealed to him and so he should now go to his village and serve his lord there prabhu das bowed low and went off to simhanand with his shri takuji he left all his family and went to live in a separate place with his shri takuji he never got married part 1 Prabhu Das's heart was always focused as he served his lord. In the evenings he would meet with other Vaishnavas. He had a lot of wealth. With it he would serve his lord, his guru and the Vaishnavas and forgot all about worldly and scriptural obligations. The Vaishnavas would praise him but his family only criticized him. However, he listened to no one. He eventually became old and incapable, even losing consciousness. So his family members got together and took him off to the pilgrimage pilgrimage spot named Prithodak. There was a spring there. where water trickled out of the earth there he regained his awareness and when he opened his eyes he realized where he now was why did you bring me here he asked they told him that he had lost consciousness and so they had brought him to prithodak this place cannot deliver me he said i am the disciple of shri acharyaji even if you keep me here for years i will not die here therefore take me back to simhanand i need to have the sight of shri takuji's lotus feet then i can leave my body However his family members did not agree they kept him there for a week more Prabhu Das regained some strength and when he got up and walked around then the family had to admit defeat and they brought brought him back home Prabhu Das bathed and said to his Shri Takuji oh my lord Shri Acharyaji has given you to me to look after however these crazy family members of mine took me away from the shelter of your lotus feet and put me in prithodak why would you make me go there and leave my body whilst not in your presence 
Surrendering his heart to Sri Thakurji in this way, he asked one Vaishnava from Simhanan to take responsibility for his Sri Thakurji. He bowed down low to his beloved Lord, exited from the temple, said Jai Sri Krishna to all the Vaishnavas there, and left his body right there and then. Whenever Simhan and Vaishnavas came together, they would praise Prabhudas Bhatt, saying he was a wonderful devotee, who was not interested in the pilgrimage spot, but had placed his whole being in Sri Atakuji's shelter alone. In Simhanand there lived someone called Kirti Chaudhri, Bhav Prakash. He was incarnated from Kamsa's washerman, whose clothes Sri Krishna had stolen in Mathura. Part 1 continued. Kirti Chaudhri criticised Prabhudas in front of all the Vaishnavas, saying that he preferred to drop his mortal coils in Hidamba rather than in the holy spot of Pritodak. He asked them all why they praised Prabhudas. Knowing him to be a Chaudhri of the village, the Vaishnavas all remained quiet. He continued his criticism for three or four days. The next night, when Chaudhri was sleeping, four beings carrying maces came to his room, threw him out of bed and began to beat him. The four beings were messengers of Vishnu. He asked them why they were beating him, since he had done nothing to harm them, to which they replied that he should not have criticised Prabhudas Bhatt, and for that reason they were going to pulverise him. Chaudhary rubbed his nose into the ground and swore that he would never do it again. In fact, that he would only praise Prabhudas if they would kindly refrain from beating him up. The messengers of Vishnu said they would spare him today, but if he were ever to indulge in such talks again, they would finish him off. Then they left. The next day, when the Vaishnavas got together and were praising Prabhudas, Chaudhary arrived there. The Vaishnavas became silent, but Chaudhary announced, What you say is true. Prabhudas was a great devotee. He wanted nothing to do with holy spots because he was totally surrendered to Sri Thakurji. As he went on praising Prabhudas like this, the Vaishnavas gathered there were surprised and asked him how his mind had changed. He showed them his back and told them about the beatings he had received from the four beings who had recuperated him for criticising Prabhudas and ordering him to only praise him in future. Hearing this, the Vaishnavas became extremely happy and continued with their praise of Prabhudas. Bhav Prakash, the principle here taught is that Vaishnavas of the path of grace should not resort to holy places of pilgrimage for any reward of any kind. Their only shelter should be their beloved Lord and Sri Acharyaji. Also, that anyone who criticises a great devotee will never be happy in this world and will proceed to hell after death. This is because great devotees are very dear to the Lord. He will tolerate offences done to him, but not those made to Vaishnavas. Thus concludes Vārta 21, the story of Prabhudas Bhatt from Simhanand, although truly there is no end to his story. Continuing into Vārta 22, the story of Purushottam Das and his wife, both Kshatriyas from Rajgat in Agra. Bhav Prakash In the eternal Leela, this Purushottam Das is a very close Saki of Sri Chandravali G, named Madhvi, and his wife is Malati. They were born into two neighbouring Kshatriya family houses in Agra. There was a lot of friendly connection between the two families and so they decided to marry the two respective children to each other. They got married, but within a year both of the fathers died. Around that time Sri Acharyaji arrived in Agra. As he passed by, both Purushottam Das and his wife were sitting by the window. Upon seeing him, they both had the desire to become his disciples. Purushottam Das ran to Sri Acharyaji and bowed low before him, even though his head was uncovered, and begged for his grace to take them into his shelter as his disciples. He invited Sri Acharyaji to come to his home, but he replied that they should come to Adel, and there they should become the disciples of Sri Gosaiji, his son. Purushottam Das objected, What is the difference between you two? You are here now, so please take us in. Who knows when our body will fail, and it may soon be difficult for us to meet you again any time soon. They were both divine souls, hence their spiritual insight. Sri Mahaprabhu came to their house and initiated both husband and wife with the Lord's name and Brahmasambandha. They asked what was their duty now, to which he replied that they should serve the Lord. Purushottam Das asked Sri Acharyaji to give them a Sri Thakurji to serve. Sri Acharyaji refused, telling him, telling them that a bad time was coming for them and they should come to Adel with him. There they would bathe in the Gangaji and thereafter receive their Sri Thakurji. He explained that the mother and their family had a dynamic, demonic, disposition and would be giving them a lot of trouble. Husband and wife were both puzzled, saying that up till now the mother had been very accommodating to them. Sri Acharyaji again explained, 
Up until now, you were not Vaishnavas, and so she had affection towards you. Now you will see what I mean. The couple then offered as much donation as they could manage and quickly went home after taking Sri Acharya's leave. Knowing that trouble was brewing, Sri Acharya went to Adele. Out of fear, the couple did not reveal to their mother that they had become Vaishnavas for a whole three days. They survived on raw milk. Then his mother saw the tulsi beads around Purushottam Das's neck and asked what they were. She objected that since they were kshatriyas, they did not need any other path. Purushottam Das just kept quiet. When the mother noticed that Purushottam Das's wife was also wearing neck beads, then she began to bemoan the fact that they had both now both become renunciates. His mother went to his wife's mother and declared that they had both become renunciates, so what were they going to do about it? The two mothers decided to go and force the two of them to remove their tulsi beads on the threat of death. This is what they did. Purushottam Das called several Vaishnavas, called several Kshetriya close relatives there and announced that the tulsi beads were more important than his head and that he would rather lose his head than take the beads off. What difference does it make to you if we wear tulsi beads? If you like, you can live here with us or if you don't like, we will make a separate place for you to live comfortably with someone to serve you and your every need. Take with you from here anything that you want. We will also serve you in any way we can. So stay here or in another place that we will provide to you. The decision is yours, but there is no need to argue. However, mark my words, we will not take off our tulsi beads and we will not eat what you prepare. If you accept the Vaishnava's path and wear a mala, then we can drink your water. <clears throat> Hearing this, the two mothers became very angry. Do you want us also to become renunciates? We brought you up and now you treat us like untouchables by refusing to eat our food. We will die because of you. The two women refused even water for five days. All the family and even the local ruler tried to reason with them, but neither of them would listen. One night, when Purushottam Das and his wife were asleep, the two mothers jumped into the well and died. The next morning, Purushottam Das performed their last rites. The whole family said to the couple that these deaths had occurred because of them and they should go and purify themselves with a bath in the Ganga River. Then only they could be part of the family. The couple decided that they should go to Adele because in this way Sri Acharyaji would give them their Sri Takoji to serve. They left their home and proceeded to Prayag. They bathed there and then went on to Adel, where, after bowing down, bowing low to them, they recounted the whole story to Sri Acharyaji and Sri Gosaiji. It all happened exactly as you had said it would. The two mothers died, and now the strife is over. Please now grace us with the Sri Takoji to serve. Sri Acharyaji said yes. The two of them were demonic souls. However, they will be liberated by the fact that you have become Vaishnavas. When a Vaishnava is born into a family, the whole of that family is liberated. Now you should serve the Lord. There was a Brahmin devotee in Adele who had become very old. He had a Swarupa of young Krishna. The couple asked him to give them the Sri Takuji to serve if he was no longer capable of doing so. The Brahmin said that he had been wondering to whom he should give the Swarupa because he was no longer able to continue his service. The Sri Acharyaji bathed the Sri Takaji in the five nectars and gave him to Purushottam Das to serve. They stayed in Adel for some days and learnt all the ways of Seva. Then they took their leave and returned to Agra. They made sure to mitigate any worldly offences within their family by feeding them all and then peacefully began to serve the Lord properly. Sri Vallabhadi Shiki Jai Jai Shri Krishna so we conclude today's reading here and tomorrow we'll continue with the story of Purushottam Das. Jai Jai Shri Radhe.